Hello everyone and welcome to the Midweek Mentor. My name is Tiffany and I actually want to tell you something kind of funny. So we're in 21 days of prayer and fasting and we have a prayer guide that we've been following. Um, and the first, so it was broken into two parts, the first half and the second half. And the first half, we broke down nine different fasts that were recorded in the Bible of people fasting for a certain purpose. And so one of the, the days was out of Acts, um, and it was fasting for um, direction, new direction. And so it was out of Acts chapter 9 was the reading. Uh, was, uh, sorry, not direction. It was wisdom for the future out of Acts chapter 9. So really funny. I'm actually in this room. I'm sitting in one of the red chairs that's behind me, which you cannot see. And I open Acts chapter 9 and I start reading. It's Acts 9, 9. Chapter 9, verse 9 is the verse. And so I read it and this is what it says. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. And <laughs> And I looked at it and I said, wait a minute, where's the fasting? Did we put the wrong scripture in here? And so I, I backed up and I was reading in, in chapter before that. And I was like, yada, 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 yada. And then I read after that and I like, I kept looking back and forth for the fasting. And I was like, I'm, we have got to, we had to, we had to have made a typo. We, we did something wrong. And then I went as I was like going over this, it riddled in my mind or it replayed in my mind, he didn't eat or drink anything. And, and it clicked. He didn't eat or drink anything. Wait a minute. That's a fast. And so I went back and I reread the verse, Acts chapter nine, verse nine. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. And then I decided, Oh no. Yeah, that's right. That's a fast. And so I, I shared that embarrassing story with you. I feel like if you're a pastor or a leader and you're watching this and you're hearing me share that, you could be cringing at how embarrassing it is that I didn't notice that that was a fast. Um, but if you're just any other person, um, I certainly do hope that you're laughing and finding some normalcy in uh, not being perfect at reading the Bible. Uh, I did share this with my husband, uh, Elliot, and he <laughs> he just looked at me and he was kind of laughing like, you didn't know that was a fast? And it's, it's funny because I've, I've grown up in church and so I read the Bible um, when I was 12, I started reading the Bible. Um, you know, that's when I really gave my life to Jesus. I grew up in church, but at age 12, I really gave my life to Jesus. I saw, um, I had actually gone to a, like a conference thing. Um, and it was, it was radical reality. And it was where people were tearing, you know, all these strong guys were tearing phone books and they had crazy radical stories about how, you know, they had drug addiction and marriage problems and family issues and, you know, just really destructive and, their lives were kind of in shambles. And then they met someone who introduced them to Jesus and their life had been completely transformed through the power of the Spirit and the person of Jesus. Um, and having grown up in church and then seeing those stories, it was like something clicked and it was, that's the piece that was missing. There's a power and a presence and there's, there's transformative power and reality in the person of Jesus. And so I became, you know, like, Yes, I do believe in the God of the Bible. I believe in the Jesus I read about because now I'm seeing that there, he's powerful. Um, and so I, you know, I fell in love with Jesus and I, I started reading my Bible. So I've, I've read my Bible a lot since age 12. I'm 32. Um, done a lot of writing, Bible reading. I've, I've read this. Um, but this is what's funny is because before that, this is about Paul, uh, who, his, his original name was Saul, and then later he becomes Paul. And this is the same Paul who ends up writing most of the New Testament. He writes so many, the book of Acts centers a lot on his ministry. And then the rest of the books that you find um, in the Bible post after Acts are letters that are written by Paul to churches that he's planted throughout Asia um, and that area. Um, so what happens before that is Paul is on... Saul is on his way to kill Christians 
and he's blinded. This is when uh, Jesus sends a blinding light and knocks him off of the road. Um, and <laughs> and he, he, he actually becomes blinded. God blinds him. And then so he goes into Damascus. That's the city where he was headed. And it says, for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. And so in reading that, I've, I've always just assumed like, he got, he was blinded. And so, yeah, he couldn't eat or drink anything like, but just him being blind doesn't affect his ability to eat or drink. It didn't affect his mouth. And he, he would have been at least mildly hungry or mildly thirsty. But in my brain, I just never made the connection. It was like, oh yeah, he was blinded. So naturally, you know, he didn't, he was injured. He didn't eat or drink anything for three days. Um, but Paul being Jewish, Saul, Paul, he's the same guy, uh, being Jewish and being a devout, he was on his way to kill Christians because he was so devout for God. He had, he had what he thought was a relationship with God and he was defending God. He was defending the God of the Bible, the, the God of the scriptures, because he knew the Old Testament. He knew the first half of the Bible. And so he was on his way to kill people who he thought were standing against the God he loved. And it was on his way that he was, you know, knocked down and blinded because Jesus, who is the God of the Bible, who came in the flesh, says, no, no, I, I am the fulfillment of the words that you believe in, knocks him off. And so in response, to that he's blinded but he chooses to fast he chooses to give up food or drink um, because something drastic had happened and this is where Ananias if you read the rest of the story Ananias is a guy um, and and God speaks to Ananias in a different part of the city and says this man Paul they knew about Paul because again he was killing Christians so they were kind of eh, afraid for their life if Paul was around um, says, you know, I want you to go and pray for this guy. He's been blinded by me, uh, but I'm, I'm actually going to use him for my kingdom. And so you need to go. So it was in response to, to, to prayer, in response to prayer and fasting, Ananias comes um, and prays for Paul. And um, what happens towards the end is it says in verse 17, Ananias went to the house and entered it. This is the house where Saul is. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me to you so that you may again, so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says in verse 18, immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. And so what I want to, what I want to share with you is the, the, um, the goal behind this fast was wisdom for the future because Saul's whole life had been turned upside down when he was blinded on the road. Everything that he knew was turned upside down. And so if you feel like you've hit something, you probably haven't been physically blinded where your sight has been removed. But if you feel like you've been blindsided or blinded by something in life, like that came out of nowhere, completely unexpected. I was headed somewhere. I was going in a direction and it was good. And now you feel like you've been blindsided. You've been derailed. Um, you know, I think our, our human tendency a lot of times is just to curl up into a ball and become complainers um, and become really um, just, you know, we can become, whether we believe in God or not, we can, we can become angry at God or we become angry at the world. And we just, um, because we're hurt and because we're confused, um, we end up picking up a terrible attitude um, and we don't really make any headway that way. Um, I think another thing that can happen as, as humans is we decide to rise up and push past the odds, you, you know, like having been blindsided or having been derailed. We muster up all the human strength that we can find uh, to just press through and power through and nothing's going to stop us and nothing's going to stand in our way. Uh, but again, we have a tendency at that point to pick up an attitude that again causes us to not make any headway because... Um, it's like we can't handle any more detours. We can't handle any more people. We can't handle any more problems. We're, we're going places. And so we can tend to bulldoze people or things and relationships 
out of our way because we're just trying to get back on track. Um, but Paul's res- what I want to look at is Paul's response because he didn't do that. He, he fasted and he prayed. He gave up eating and drinking for three days. Um, so I'm not saying that you need to give up eating or drinking for three days, but if you haven't participated in the prayer and fasting yet, you still have a chance. Um, it ends on this Saturday, the 22nd. Uh, so you can still jump on it and be in prayer and fasting with us. I'm, I'm not doing food. I'm actually giving up. There's an hour. I put my kids to bed and then, um, I, I dedicate an hour to coming into to this room and I open up my Bible and I read and I grab my journal and I write and I pray for things. And so I'm, I'm giving up one hour of TV watching, hanging out with my husband and TV watching. And he's agreed to that. You know, this is what I want to do for my fast. Um, and so that's what I'm doing. I'm giving up one hour and I wanted to be intentional about reading my Bible and, and praying. And I wanted to do the, I, I did a couple uh, weeks ago, a midweek mentor on prayer, and so I, I, I'm prayer journaling. I'm writing down my prayers, the things that I'm that I'm thinking of and, and praying for. Um, and so that's that. He he fasted in response to being blindsided. Um, and so if you feel like you've been blindsided, try fasting. Uh, if you go to our website, lifelinelodi.com, you can find resources on fasting: complete fast, partial fast, uh, soul fast. Um, a, a media fast. There's there's lots of things that you can do. Lots of ways you can participate if you if you want to do something like that. So the other thing, wisdom for the future. Um, after Paul prayed and fasted, then Ananias came. Scales were removed for his eyes, and Ananias brought a word from the Lord that said, um, "Jesus has plans for you." And then it says that he wants you, Ananias said he wanted Paul to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Paul became baptized. And so there's two things I wanted to kind of touch on. Um, Paul had a relationship with God because he knew the Old Testament, but he didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Um, And so when he was blindsided and when he began to pray and fast, the relationship with God that he had began to transform into a more complete relationship because he was introduced to the person of the Holy Spirit. And then he was baptized into the ministry of Jesus. Um, And so God is in three persons. We believe he's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so Paul knew God the Father or God, but he didn't know Jesus and he didn't know the Holy Spirit. Uh, And we're actually doing a series starting this Sunday and it's going to be on the Holy Spirit. We're going to take five weeks and we're going to talk about the person of the Holy Spirit, the myths that surround the person of the Holy Spirit. the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, and then how we live practically being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I encourage you to tune in for the next five weeks uh, to watch that. And then the next thing that happened is that he was baptized. He hadn't been baptized, and that's water baptism, which signifies uh, repentance. John, it says John the Baptist, he came to, to, to preach good news of the kingdom and, and of repentance, which led the way. Anybody who was baptized with John's baptism, that water baptism, going under the water and coming back up, they were ready to receive the ministry of Jesus and the person of the Holy Spirit because they had repented. Uh, and so if you haven't been baptized yet, if you're new to the faith, you, you know, you're coming to, to faith, you've been watching us online, you're, you want to engage with Jesus, uh, you want to engage, you want to have a deeper relationship with God, but you haven't been baptized yet, then we encourage you to take that step. You can actually, at the same place, lifelinelodi.com, you can sign up to be baptized. It's just a website contact form, or you can email us at info at lifelinelodi.com, and we'd love to take that next step with you. Baptism is just simply you go under the water and you're saying, I'm dying to my old way of life, and you come up out of the water saying, I, I know that I've been born again. I'm giving my life to Jesus because there, God does have a plan for your future. There is wisdom for your future, and He wants to speak to you. He doesn't want you to shove forward with all of your strength um, in in a hard way. He, God really wants to bless you, and He wants you to... Um, he wants you to feel weightless. It's, you know, he says, come to me, all you are burdened and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you, um, which will give you rest. And so I encourage you to tune in about our series for the Holy Spirit and find out more about the person of the Holy Spirit. And then I also encourage you to take, take it, take a next step and be baptized. Um, 
If you don't know much about baptism and you're not plugged into a church, you can Google it. <laughs> you can Google scriptures on baptism um, and, and, and find those. Um, I would encourage you to look in the Bible. Don't just trust Google or the interweb, um, but go scriptures on baptism and, and go read those. Uh, and you can also email us for more information. We'd love to give you that. Um, I love you guys. I, I hope you found this helpful um, and funny. <laughs> uh, it's normal to read the Bible and miss things. Um, and it's really funny when, when things click. And so um, I just, I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that he would make his face to shine upon you and that he would give you rest. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, guys. See you next time.